Gradient texture layers enable you to transition from one value to another based on a user-defined input parameter. This can range from black and white scalar values used to control the specular amount of a material based on the incidence angle to the camera, or simple color transitions over the length of a mesh's surface. Let's take a look at a few examples of gradients in action. Start by adding a default 1 meter sphere to the scene, and then add a gradient layer to the shader tree. Middle mouse click on the color gradient color bar to create a new key on the right side of the bar and change its color to red. When a gradient is added, its input parameter is set to incidence by default, which is the relative angle between the camera and the surface being evaluated. If we open the gradient editor, we can see that the portion of the surface that faces the camera has an incidence of 0%, while the areas of the surface perpendicular to the camera have a value of 100%. Create two new keys toward the left side of the gradient color bar. Change the color of the first key to black, the second to blue, and the third to white. If we select all the keys except the one on the right and change its interpolation to stepped, we can create a basic eye setup. Moving the camera around the object demonstrates the incidence input parameter in action. No matter where the camera is placed, the portion of the surface facing the camera will always be black, and the color will transition through the keys based on the angle of incidence. Let's look at another example. Add a hybrid procedural texture layer and change its layer effect to displacement. Select the material item and increase its displacement distance to 200 millimeters. Place the gradient above the displacement layer and change its input parameter to displacement height. Change all the keys to auto interpolation and adjust their input positions to your liking. As you can see, the colors of the gradient transition based on the height of the displaced surface. A common input parameter is distance to locator. If you expand the gradient layer and select the gradient's texture locator, you can change its position in the scene. If the locator isn't visible in the viewport, toggle the show texture locators attribute on. The distance to locator input parameter allows you to ramp the values of the gradient based on the distance of the surface to the texture locator. This option throws some users off when they aren't aware of the size of their mesh. Knowing the size of your mesh enables you to be more accurate with the placement of the keys on your gradient. Take advantage of the dimensions tool if you need to get a quick measurement. Knowing the size of your mesh, you can use the values displayed along the bottom of the gradient editor to position the keys to your liking. If the layer effect is set to something that requires a scalar value such as luminous amount, the color gradient will have no effect and you'll need to use the value gradient. Simply create keys and adjust their values to produce results. There are many more input parameters that can be used to specify how the gradient is applied to the surfaces of your mesh, so be sure to spend some time experimenting with them.